Hello everyone. Good evening. Hope everyone's having a good evening tonight. So uh, this is kind of a little impromptu uh, study group tonight. I, uh, I've been studying for my A plus and uh, for this evening and kind of going through some stuff. And I'm like, you know what, you know, why not put some together some flashcards and uh, share with everyone and kind of you open this up to everyone. So I want to bring you guys along tonight and uh, do a little kind of like an A-plus study group, but this is more like a flashcards where just kind of fill in the answers, maybe open up to some you know, chat about IT and the A-plus. Um, like I said, I'm going to get ready on the 15th to go out and get my uh, take my 902 exam. Um, so I've been studying and just want to bring you guys along. So with that said, let's get this thing started. Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Tonight's kind of like a impromptu study group. Um, I'm doing more of like some flashcards. I, you know, I was studying tonight for the A plus, and I just kind of was like, you know, why don't I do a live stream tonight? You know, bring you guys along. You know, maybe if you guys are getting ready to take the A plus exam, or you know, just want to freshen up on some knowledge. You know, um, perfect opportunity to right here. I got together. I think about nine little questions, flashcards, and uh, you know, if you uh, have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. I'll kind of circle back around to the chat um, after everything and. Uh, well, yeah, let's just kind of get started here. So, um, like I said, this is kind of like um, our study groups, but this is more of like a flashcard style. So, um, and I'm going to do a little bit of chat along with each one of these flashcards, give you a little bit more in-depth knowledge on um, each topic. So, this one here, low-level for formatting versus standard formatting. So, we're talking here, you know, like on a Windows system, when you go to do a format, you know, a full format versus quick format, um, you know, what's the difference here you know uh, a low level format versus a standard format if you have the answer and if you got a quick little answer you want to plug in you know let's go ahead and just drop those down in the chat i see a lot of people are starting to chime in here uh currently taking csi one or three uh 12 course at my university after passing my final exam i will be test out pc pro certified congratulations have I heard about test uh, test out uh, PC Pro? I mean, I've heard out of the company test out. Um, haven't really heard about much about their certifications. Um, I know they're one of a little bit more popular certifications. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, in the grand scheme of things like CompTIA, Cisco, I think test out is probably still one of the lower ones still. So, um, I haven't done much research into them on all honesty. So again. This flashcard here, low-level formatting versus standard formatting. What's the main difference? So, sorry if I can get my thing to advance here. My head out of the way. There we go. Low-level formatting versus uh, uh, standard formatting. High-level formatting does not erase all data, as in standard formatting. Rather, it prepares a disk to read and write by erasing bookkeeping information on the disk. Does... Uh, information on the disk does some simple tests to make sure all sectors are readable then creates an internal address table that it later uses to locate information uh low level excuse me uh I mistyped this one low level formatting erases the disk entirely it will effectively get rid of any software drivers sectors address tables and all other data leaving your hard drive like new and ready to start fresh so in a security aspect, when we're talking um, a low level versus standard for, uh, format. So like if you, in a Windows based system, you click that quick format, that is actually not erasing pretty much any data. That is just erasing the table at the beginning of the drive, telling the computer where the actual information is locating. It erases that and then creates a new table and does a quick disk check to make sure all the sectors are usable and then just goes from there. If you actually want to erase the data, you actually have to do a full format or what's called a low level format. So, you know, this is really important. And sometimes just a quick format won't solve any problems. If you're trying to solve a problem um, 
do a complete fresh install on a, of an operating system or something, you, uh, a, a low level format is really what you're looking to do. So, I hope you all set for the CompTIA exam. Awesome. Welcome everyone. If you're just starting to join in, I'm just kind of doing a quick little, I guess you can call it an A plus study group. I was studying for the, my 902 exam and I was like, you know, why don't I do a live stream, bring some people on, you know, do some chatting, uh, go over some flashcards I kind of threw together. I threw these all together on my own and, um, you know, we just see what we can make of it. So, all right, this next one, we're talking about NTFS versus shared permissions. So this is again like a Windows based question. We're talking about NTFS versus shared permissions. So we're talking file permissions. What is the two major differences in the technologies here? In in the in the uh, in the policies here. Is the newer version of the A plus harder than the older version? You know, Zach over on IT Career Questions, he put out a great video explaining it and Personally, I think the answer is no. Um, the the 10 series A plus versus the 9 series, there is a lot of similarities. They added some stuff to it. They didn't take a whole lot away. Um, if you go online, I believe you can find the uh, exam objectives for the new 10 series already out there. Um, but no, um, now you can take your 901 and 902 exams up until about June, I believe, June, July. If you haven't started studying for the 9 series yet, don't bother. Uh, if you haven't started at all, just start studying for the 10 series. There's already information out there. I know Professor Messer is already putting out videos for the new 10 series uh, A plus exam. So if you haven't started, just jump, jump right into the 10 series. But like if you're in the same boat as me where like maybe you've already taken and passed your 901 and you're already studying for your 902, just it gives you that much more motivation to buckle down and take your 902 exam uh, and just get it done. So that's the boat I am. I'm in. That's why I'm still going for my 902 exam. All right, let's talk about this NTF uh, NTFS versus shared permissions. So shared permissions are permissions that you set on a folder when you share the folder the share permissions determine the type of access you have to the share folder across the network there are three types of uh, shared permissions full control change and read only ntfs permissions determine the actions your user can take uh, for a folder or a file both across the network and locally unlike shared permissions ntfs Permissions offer several other permissions besides full control change and read that can be set for groups or individuals. The most restrictive permission applies when NTFS permissions conflict or when applies when share and NTFS permissions conflict. So one thing about these CompTIA exams is they not only want you to know the definition like this here where we're talking about the definition, but they want you to actually be able to implement this where if they brought you to a simulation and they asked you to change the file permissions on a folder, you need to know where to go and how to change those permissions. So that's one thing. It's one thing to know what they're talking about. It's a whole nother thing to know, um, you know, what the, you know, how to actually do it. So that's one thing you ought to keep in mind. Excuse me. I'm still getting over cold. And it seems like whenever I click that live stream button, my voice kind of starts to go right now. So, all right, let's go on to the next one. Define a zombie slash botnet. So the 902 covers a lot of security topics. So define what a zombie slash botnet are. And if, if you have any answers to these, Feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, you know, see if you can answer them before anyone else does. And don't go out and just Google. Yeah, you know, you're not going to have Google available when you go take the your exam. So, you know, really, if you understand what the item is, you know, drop it in the chat, you know, and, you know, just start talking about it. Tyler, let's see. On 
what versions are they on Tyler or rather when was the new version released I think the new version is being released this month um, and if anyone happens to know the correct answer go ahead and let me know in the chat but I believe I want to say the 15th of this month or maybe it was as of the first you can take the new 10 series exam uh, I know Professor Messer has already been putting out content for like a month straight for this new uh, the new exam, but um, I, I believe it's not if it's not the middle of this month, or if it's not already, it's, it's going to be about the middle of this month when you can take the ten series exam. So let me check something here. I'm going to switch the screens here for a second. Oop. All right, Dakota vouchers for for A plus from. Um, if you're talking about like you know where to go buy your vouchers, um, one thing I recommend is don't pay full price for your exam vouchers. There are so many people offering discounts out there, um, but the biggest discount of them all is if you're a student, uh, you get. Um, a huge discount like on the 901 series exams you get over a 50 percent discount like the your exam voucher for like the 901 902 series cost about 213 us dollars at this time somewhere right around there i i have a student email address still i'm a student at my uh local community college and i only paid 97 dollars for my a plus exam it's over a 50 percent discount um, so if you're a student, you have a student email address, <clears throat> really utilize that student discount. Um, and if you don't, I mean, Professor Messer offers uh, exam discounts, um, the, the, you know, voucher discounts, you know, go out there and get a, a, a discount code. So. Yeah, hundred dollars from your university. Yeah, it's, um, I paid ninety seven dollars for mine. Uh, students get a huge discount on, on uh, CompTIA vouchers. I mean, it's not always 50, uh, half off, but I mean, sometimes it's a little bit more, sometimes it's a little bit less depending on the voucher. All right, so getting back here, uh, define a zombie slash botnet. A bot, short for robot, is a type of software application or script that performs an automated task on command. Bad bots perform malicious tasks that allow attackers to remotely take control over a affected computer. Once affected, these machines also may be referred to as zombies. Although taking over a computer is useful, the real value is when criminals collect huge number of zombie computers and networks then <coughs> networks then so they can all can be controlled at once to perform a large scale malicious act these types of no, uh these types of attacks are known as botnets so botnet so a type of botnet you might know a commonly known one is like a ddos attack where you know a ping of death attack where all these computers around the world just start bombarding a certain server with all these pings and the server can't handle it and shuts down so um that would be known as like a ddos attack or a zero day att ddos attack it it is actually so all these uh questions here let's see if i can pull it up probably one second here so these are actually i made all these flashcards straight from the CompTIA uh, 902 exam objectives. So let's switch back here. So this is the exam objectives. And I'll here, I will, give me a second here. I will put a link to this in the chat. So the... Oh, it's not going to let me put a link in my own chat. Hold on, guys. There we go. So there's a link to the exam objectives. So 
Um, you know, CompTIA tells you what's going to be on the exam, you know, right from the get-go. Um, you know, what, what to study for. And there's a lot of crossing in the A+, plus, Net+, plus, and Security+, plus, as Tyler was saying right there. A lot of the information kind of crosses each other. But right here in the beginning of these exam objectives, get my big head out of the way. So 29% of the exam, we're, they're going to be talking about Windows operating systems. 12% of the exam covers other operating systems and technologies. So we're talking about Linux, Mac, uh, mobile OS systems, you know, iOS or uh, uh, Android. And then 22%, 22% of the 902 A plus exam covers security. You can see it right there. They have a whole objective section. 24% uh, covers troubleshooting and 13% covers operational procedures. So if we scroll down here to section three, section three, security. These are all the security topics they want you to know uh, uh, for the 902 exam. Identify common security threats and vulnerabilities, spyware, viruses, worms, trojans, root kits, ransomware. And not only identify them, know what they do. Uh, they're talking about RFID badges, ID, key fobs, uh, firewall. Uh, you know, they want to know the difference between um, different of uh, basic Windows OS security settings with an administrator, guest, standard users. Look right here. This was our, we had already talked about this NTFS versus share permissions. It not only wants you to know them, but you know how to moving files and copying files and file attributes, file attributes like security attributes and file attributes. So it, it, th there's a huge amount of content they want you to know uh, for the just in the security part. Um, and then given a scenario, secure a Soho wireless and wired networks. You know, changing the fall SSIDs. Uh, disabling SSID broadcast. So when they say given a scenario, more than likely they're probably gonna talking about they're gonna put you in front of a simulation and want you to perform. You know, they'll tell you to perform a task, and you have to do it. You have to know how to go into a Soho wireless router and perform the said task. So, um, and then I mean the it's it's really amazing what CompTIA does for you. They they really line out everything you need to know for these exams so uh, awesome i don't even know why i opened the microsoft store <clears throat> all right let me take a drink here before we move on all right now we're going to get into a little bit of linux to find the basic linux command uh you know i'm gonna i know i'm gonna pronounce this wrong Ch chone chone C H O W N. Define what that command means. So, if you know what that command is, drop it down in the chat. You know, give me a little brief description. You know, let me know. If you guys are just tuning in, uh, this is kind of like a little impromptu study group, A plus study group. So, um, a lot of you know, I'm getting ready for, to take my 902 exam. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, I'm taking it here on the 15th. So I'm here at home studying for the, my 902 exam. And I was like, you know, why don't I turn this into a live stream? A little, uh, a little, uh, you know, do some flashcards and then maybe some ask me anything. Kevin run, runs on Duncan. Awesome. Thank you. And hitting the nail on the head. So the Linux uh, Chone command is an abbreviation for change owner. Uh, in Linux, all files are associated with an owner and a group. The chone command is used uh, is used to change the user and group ownership given to a file directory or link. So Kevin runs on Dun Duncan for the win. <laughs> all right, another Linux command. What is uh, define PWN? 
And like I said, CompTIA not only wants you to know what these acronyms and these commands do, but if they put you out a command line, they want you to they want you to show them that you actually know how to execute these commands. So they might say using such command perform such task. And you need to know how to do it and you need to know what attributes are also incorporated along with a said command. Nick, you're just tuning in. Welcome. Uh, this is uh, kind of an impromptu A plus study group. Um, sources I use to study. So I personally have used several. Um, I first mainly started off with CBT Nuggets. Uh, currently, I'm using IT Pro TV. Um, I've used tons of Professor Messer. Um, you know, I tune into his study groups all the time. Uh, I've watched his videos. I really like to use a wide variety of resources. That way I hopefully paint the biggest picture. Uh, the other day during my live stream, I was going to give some tips for taking an exam. One of the biggest and most useful tips I found um, is like with C CBT Nuggets and IT Pro TV, and I'm pretty sure Pluralsight does this as well, is you can take a practice exam. And so like, or, you know, you can sit down, take a practice exam and it will show you what is your strengths and what's your weaknesses. So you know you're not wasting time studying things that you already know. You can study things that you know you, you didn't do good on during your practice exam, and keep on working on that. And then go after you've studied for you know a couple of days, couple of weeks, or whatever. Go take that practice exam and see where your weaknesses and strengths are. So. Um, yeah, but I mean, for study material, currently I'm using IT Pro TV and Professor Messer, and it seems to be working really well. PWM takes you to the directory where uh, takes you to the directory where you are currently in. So the PWN command, print work directory, writes the full path name of the current work directory to the stand, uh, uh, standard output. The equivalent on Microsoft, you know, in the command prompt is the CD command with no ar uh, arguments. So, if you know, m most people win are Windows people, the, the Windows equivalent would be like the CD command. So that's how I actually remembered it. Okay, <clears throat> what is the Microsoft tool MSTSC used for? Microsoft tool MSTSC used for. So, and that's all I'm going to give you guys on that one. Because, you know, that question might come up, you know, and it might be a multiple choice or it might be a fill in the blank. Or they might say, using the Microsoft tool MSTSC, perform such command. So... Wow. You know, this is one that actually kind of stumped me today. I don't know why, because I've actually used it before, but I came across this when I was studying today and I couldn't remember it. And your peep and you guys are hitting it right nail on the head, RDP. So uh, Microsoft Terminal Service Client is what it stands for. Creates a connection to the remote desktop host, session host, server on other remote computers, edits and exits remote desktop connection configuration file migra and migrates legacy connection files that were created with a client connection manager to a new RDP connection files. So, M Microsoft Terminal Service Client Tool. And like I said, CompTM might say using this tool and they might give you the name or the acronym to tell you to perform this task. So that's one thing you guys get really got to be ready. I can't hone that in enough for you guys. So awesome. All right. How about the M I I'm sorry, M S I N F O 32 tool. What is the Microsoft M S I N F O 32 use for? This is another one that for some reason just stumped me today. I couldn't remember. Couldn't remember what that stood for. So I figured I'd throw it in the flashcard. 
And I use a different set of flashcards. These are some flashcards I solely made just for tonight. So, chat is blowing up this evening. Well, blowing up is a relative term. There we go. Pro provide system information. I think Nick hit the nail on the head here. So, the MSINFO, Microsoft Info 32, displays the comprehensive view of your hardware system components and software environments. You can use the, my, I'm going to just call it, let's call it the Microsoft Info 32 command line tools switches to do all the following. And so this is where you'd put arguments at the end of their command. You can use system information from a batch file. Create a .nfo or .txt file that contains information from specific categories. Open system inf information and display only specific categories. Saves a file without opening system information. Saves a file silently, excuse me. Start system information connects to a remote computer or create a shortcut that opens system information in a frequently used configuration. So these are just some of the examples what Microsoft Info 32 tool can actually do. So, alrighty. Schedule backups in Windows 10. So this is one of the scenarios where they're gonna put you in front of a command prompt and say, set up Windows 10 to backup. You know, you know, they might give you a little bit more, you know, in-depth answer, you know, definition about that. So, schedule Windows 10. All right. So, we're at my desktop here. You can't see the start menu for down here for some reason. So, let's say we'll go to start. And we'll go to settings. Then, from settings, how what do you do? Well, on a Windows 10 system, you click on update and security. Now that we're here... You go to backups, and you see I've already have a backup set up. Simple as that. And if you want more, more control, more parameters, click that more option, and this is where you would define what files are being backed up. So, I hope you guys caught that one there. All right, let's see. Let's see if I can get the chat to reload. I've been having problems with the chat on this. And the chat does not want to come back up. Let's try this again. There we go. Thank you, Tyler. <laughs> All right. Well, that's all I actually prepared for this evening. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to chime in in the chat. Like I said, if you're studying for your A+, what well, big useful tool I found is going over the exam objectives. So that's everything that I covered tonight. I pulled straight out of here, straight out of these exam objectives. So um, these are all things you should know inside and out before you go take your exam. So... Um, I left a link to that in the description already. Here, I'll drop another one here. Let's see. There's a link to the uh, CompTIA's exam objectives. All the questions tonight I covered came from uh, part of the 902 series exam. Uh, I haven't even began studying for the 10 series because I don't plan on taking the 10 series, to be honest with you. Uh, I probably never will take... Uh, the 10 series exam. I'll take the 902, uh, hopefully pass it, and then I'll start taking some other certifications. You know, Security Plus is definitely on my list. Um, but as soon as I'm done with my A Plus, I plan on diving right into Cisco. And one thing, as long as I pass my A Plus here soon, um, on the 15th, I plan on diving right into Cisco, and I'm actually going to start a series where we're going to uh, break out Cisco routers and switches. You can see them. I got some of my routers right there. There's a switch sitting on top. I got another one here on the floor. And I'm going to walk you guys through setting up and configuring uh, Cisco routers and switches. So that's another cool thing I'm really excited about doing. Um, I got some labs I want to work through. And I'm just going to do a live stream where you guys can kind of chime in and chat. So 
Uh, Dakota, you're playing uh, smart with the 900 series. Yeah, I mean, I'll probably never take another A-plus exam. I just plan on taking the next level exam. That's one great thing about CompTIA offers. So I'll take my get my a plus on the i'm hoping on the 900 series and then i'm going to go ahead and switch to my take some cisco certifications and then i'm going to loop back around and get my security plus and once i get my security plus that renews my a plus certification so nope absolutely not not going to take a network plus uh nick um we i'm um, where i work currently so i'm a if you don't know already, I'm an IT support specialist. I work in the hospitality industry. Um, we pretty much solely use Cisco router firewalls, switches, and router. Uh, yeah, firewalls, routers, switches, uh, wireless access points. Um, so we are very heavy Cisco users. So um, you know, it makes no point. It makes no sense for me to go take my network plus when. The CSENT and CCNA will cover everything I need to know. And my work is willing to pay for me to go take my certification. So why not? Um, and I, I definitely probably going to take my CC, uh, uh, CCMP eventually too. Because um, that, my end goal is to become a network engineer. Um, I do a lot of network engineering tasks already. But that job title, that prestigious job title, I want. So uh, that's my end goal. So, but uh, the network plus, I'm not, I'm not knocking the network plus. The network plus is a great exam, and um, if you're really want to get into networking, um, but you're not working in the IT field already or something, take your network plus because the network plus is very broad and gender neutral and it will show that it'll show your interest in networking um if you're working somewhere already that uses um let's say um gosh i'm spaced on the name um i want to say jupiter but it's not jupiter um anyways uh gosh what is the name Juniper, thank you. Um, anyways, if you're using, if you're at a shop that uses that or HP uh, switches, go out and get those certifications because they're gonna immediately help you, and your supervisors are gonna are, are gonna notice that. So, you know, go out and get those certifications. Uh, any interview tips for technical support position? Um, so, I have tons of them because I interviewed quite a bit um and very recently i i just started my job back in july guys if you don't know uh yet um so just in july i went out and took uh started as a network technician and um sorry i'm changing some things on the stream here and uh my biggest tip and what went the longest is be honest if they ask you a question you don't know don't BS about it because they're going to know you're BSing about it. Be honest, you know, and tell them, you know, you know, I, I don't have an answer for you. I, I haven't ran across that situation yet, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back and research it. So, and, you know, and, you know, look it up and do my research and get some education on that. So I know better next time. So that, that, that is a, my biggest advice to you. And then if you can somehow convey your soft skills to them. Sorry. Um, you know, soft skills are huge in the IT field. Um, and I really think that was a huge contributing factor to me getting my job is my soft skills I had. So I'm very much a people person. Um, I communicate with people a lot. And that was huge uh, for me getting my job. So... Should I go get a master's degree in computer science after getting an uh, undergrad? Does it, or does it worth going for a master's degree? Um, you know, it, I, it depends. It, it, it depends on everyone. I will tell you guys this. I landed over a $50,000 a year job 
with no degree. I have no college. I, I, I've taken some college courses. I probably maybe have a year of college under my belt that I took right after high school. And I just college wasn't for me. So I landed over a $50,000 a year job as an IT support specialist with no degree and no IT certifications. Still to this day, I mean, uh, uh, technically I have one certification. Uh, right after I started, I went out and got my Cisco Meraki Network Operator Certification, which is, um, you know, we run a lot of Cisco Meraki product line uh, products. Um, so the Cisco Meraki Network Operator is meant for CCNA level uh, people, people who have taken their CCNA and routed and switch. Uh, this is just d dives deeper into their Meraki product line, how to configure their, their switches, firewalls, routers, how to configure VLANs and all that. So, um, but yeah, no, no, no degree, no certifications. And I landed over a $50,000, uh, $50,000 a year job. So, um, no, I don't think it's necessary. Um, you know, and yeah, I, I, to be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of the college. Um, you know, that's just me. A college degree will always benefit you. But um, one person I plan on bringing along uh, and interviewing here soon, um, they work in the information security sector. And uh, I can't disclose how much they make, but they make a lot of money. And he just has his associate's degree. Uh, he's working alongside people that have really high degrees. But he just has his associate's degree, and he just grind and grind and grinded to get where he was at. You know, he went out and studied. He went out and got certifications. He, it, it, you know, he he's another great example. I'm actually planning on bringing him onto uh, the channel and doing an interview with him and give his story. And, I mean, I, I will tell you this. He makes way more than me. Uh, he didn't come from an IT background. He just landed, but he landed a phenomenal job. So more on that later. Uh, <clears throat> are you planning to, are you planning to learn or is your company going to the cloud, AWS or Azure? So I do plan on learning a little bit of Azure. We very little use Azure. Um, so we are in the process of converting to Office 365. Along with that, we are we do have a small Azure instance. Um, it's more for like an AD sync. So um, our users will be able to use their AD credentials to log into their Office 365. Um, I mean, the cloud's the future. As in regards, yeah, I'm going to learn a little bit of Azure so I, I can help out with work. But um, that's not my main focus right now. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Do AWS. Yeah, um, AWS I know is huge. A lot of people are using it. But I'm not using it at my work. So it doesn't apply to my work. Where if I go out and get an Azure shirt certification, I can show that how that's going to apply to my work. And more likely, my work's willing to pay for my certification and any resources used to get that certification. Um, so that's why I'm going after Azure. Um, you know, that's down the road again. Like I said, uh, first things first, uh, get my A+, plus, and then I'm going to go for my CSENT. Um, after my CSENT, probably a Security+. Plus, so, And then Azure, maybe... Um, um, another thing I'm working on a lot is uh, Microsoft Server 2016. Um, I kind of want to get ready because uh, Server 19, I think, is coming out soon. And my boss is, you know, nipping out the heels to get everything moved up from uh, 2008 R2. We're currently using 2008 R2, and we're, we just got some really nice new HP uh, servers, and we're in the process of migrating our servers and updating their performance, so... Um, Tyler, you're considering AWS. Tyler, walk me through that. Why are you considering AWS? Why do you want to learn? Are you in the field already? Um, do you have any previous work, you know, work experience with uh, AWS? What's your driving? I'm kind of, I'm, I'm curious. What's your driving, uh, you know, motivation behind AWS? So, uh, Dakota, are you good? Oh, sorry. 
Dakota, are you going to start selling more fancy merchandise? I am working on redesigning our merch store. So, yes, we have a merch store already. Um, I mean, we're, we're barely a month into this channel. Uh, there's a merch store. Link for it in the description. I have a lot of new merch I am going to design here soon. Um, I have a uh, IT career skills shirt. Uh, but my wife stole it from me the other day. So, uh, <laughs> I, that's why I haven't got a chance to wear it on the channel. But yes, um, merch store, link in the description, check it out. Uh, more merch will be coming soon. Um, if you like it, let me know. So, Tyler, uh, want to broaden, want to broaden my certification of diversity. Awesome. I mean, absolutely. Um, tons of people are using AWS. And I can guarantee you, you'll never be like, oh, man, why did I waste my time learning AWS? You know, go for it. Absolutely. So. MacBook sticker. I haven't thought about that. Yeah, I, you know, like I said, we're barely a month old. So um, I definitely need to plan, plan on doing some more uh, merch here soon. So um, let's see here. Love me some stickers. You know, uh, so our, our merch store currently ran through Teespring. And I'm not a fan of Teespring stickers. So I, I've ran off-roading clubs in the past um, and different merch campaigns. And Teespring has never, I never liked their, their stickers. I didn't think they were great quality. So maybe I'll start looking into it. If there's a demand, I mean, for it, let me know. If you guys want to... Uh, uh, IT career sales stickers. Let me know. I'll get them designed up, and uh, you know, we'll uh, maybe I'll do a little giveaway. Maybe I'll give some stickers away. So, been in AWS for four years now. How do you like AWS? You know, four years in. What, what uh, are you doing it for work? Uh, are you just studying it because that's a goal of yours? You know, let me know. Oh. Uh. But yeah, no, new merch will be coming here soon. Pretty good. That's the biggest thing. You know, people come to me saying, okay, Dakota, what certification should I get to get into the IT field? Well, what do you like to do? Um, you know, what's your passion? Um, for me, I like I said, I want to become a network engineer. So for me, it'd make no sense to go out and get a... <clears throat> Yo, know, like a, a data center certification. Um, I mean, it, it does, but it does not, not exactly. You know, um, you know, why would I waste my time with um, some scripting language or something? You know, I, I, I have answers to all those questions because, you know, network, uh, you know, uh, software defined networking and, you know, yes, Python and that's all coming soon. But, why would I go down a path I don't want to be? It really, it you you need to do what you love. I before this I was a bulldozer operator and I made over twenty thousand dollars a year more than I currently do. I took a twenty thousand dollar a year pay cut to get into the IT field. Um, and that's I I've kind of explained that story before. Maybe I should do a little bit more video why I did that. But the truth is is I was miserable. That was a dead end job. I was maxed out on my pay and I had no future. I was going to sit in that bulldozer until the day I died. Um, and I wanted to change. So I started studying. I started studying for my A+. I started putting myself out there. I brushed off my resume. I went to networking and uh, tons of networking events. Uh, I sat down with the local unemployment office and uh, I really put the grind to it. And, uh, and you know, if, if you want a change bad enough, you, you know, it will happen. And yes, I took a $20,000 $20, a year pay cut. You know, does, does that hurt? Absolutely. But do I regret it? Absolutely not. I have my dream job. And you know what? I'll be, that $20,000 a year will come back. You know, it's, it's just money. Uh, I, I will earn that before I, you know it again. Uh, so, but what matters the most is I'm truly happy. I enjoy what I'm doing. I have enough, I make enough money to put food on the table for my three kids and my wife. 
um, you know, I can't ask for any more. You know, just a couple days ago, I was out installing some networking equipment on a job site, and my company flew me down on the company plane. We have our own planes. When I got to the airport, I hopped in a Porsche, drove to the job site, and worked. How, I mean, come on now. Isn't that an amazing life? So, you know, yes, I made a sacrifice, but I don't regret one bit of it. Tomorrow morning, I, I drive out to the airport. I drive up alongside the plane. I don't go through TSA. I drive up to, to the plane, walk onto the plane. When I get to the airport, they roll out literally at no joke, a red carpet for me and me and my coworkers, you know, they roll out a red carpet outside the plane. We walk about 10 feet and hop in a brand new Mercedes and drive off. Tell me that isn't an amazing job. And I work in IT. This is my first IT gig. Never worked IT in my life. Didn't, didn't volunteer. I didn't do uh, any internships. I just grinded and grinded and grinded. And I put my, I was honest in all my interviews. I didn't lie about a thing. And that's how you succeed in this life. So this is how you succeed. All right. Sorry. Little rant there. Uh, let's see. My next cert, my next cert and degree is going to align to a cloud career. Awesome. Uh, CompTIA Cloud Plus, Server Plus, and AWS certainly. Absolutely. That's a, that's a great degree of path. Um, and that's a great career path. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, talk about job, uh, you know, job stability. You know, you're always going to have employment with those certifications. Absolutely. AWS. Nick, uh, here's a list of training and certs that a local tech training school instructor suggested to achieve for an IT career. Sorry, I'm trying to read the small chat here. Uh, three exams of Microsoft MCSA 2012, R2 2016. One exam for Microsoft Exchange Server 2013 or Office 365. One exam for SCUM, Microsoft uh, System Certifications Manager. One exam for VMware. One exam for ITL. One exam for CCNA. These are this is a lot here. Um, Nick, I mean, are you, Nick, are you currently in the IT field, or are you looking to? Um, I mean, are you in the IT field currently, or not? Are you looking to get into the IT field because? If you had all these certifications, but no prior experience, you, you, it's going to be really hard to get a job because people, uh, all right, you have been for 20 years. Awesome. Okay. So uh, next question. Are you looking to take all these certifications? That's a lot of certifications. Work for IBM. Awesome. That's awesome. Got laid off. Yeah, I understand. I can imagine that. IBM being a big company. Um, you know, to be honest with you, um, but no certs, you know, you, so you have the work experience. What is it? What is your true passion, Nick? What do you want to do? Um, because the, this is all over the board. Um, I, I, I have to say, I disagree with what this recommendation here, because, um, the, there is no defined path. Yes. You have a, this would give you a huge broad spectrum of uh knowledge but how much one how much are you gonna retain that knowledge and two do you think uh you know gosh i i really can't recommend that path to go get all the certifications before you get your job uh let me know what you're what you want to do do you want to be in networking you want to be in security cloud what's your path um and then i'd really focus on certifications you know in regards to that so most companies look for college degrees these days. If uh, one doesn't have a college degree, does that prevent someone from getting into a company with experience? Um, you know, I don't know if you're in here earlier when I said, I, I currently, I don't have a degree. Um, when I landed my job, I had no degree and no certifications and no ex prior work experience. Um, so no, um, you know, that, that doesn't prevent you from getting a job. Um, and I really think college degrees are becoming less and less popular uh, for the fact that companies like Google and Facebook are removing their degree requirements. 
Um, so, uh, I, like I said, I, I'm not a huge fan of spending tons and thousands of money to get a college degree that's not laser focused on what you're going to do. And that's why I really think that um, IT certificates are starting to outweigh the college degree. Yes, a college degree will always benefit you. And if you're working towards one, finish it. But I can't always say I stand behind them because less and less companies are making it a mandatory requirement to have. Yeah, Nick, you have 20 years of experience. You can work for any company. And 49, that, that doesn't mean anything, Nick. Um, when applying for jobs, they're asking for an A+. Plus. You know, 20 years experience, I think that that's huge. Um, you know, if you want to go get a, uh, yeah, I, I'd say go get an A plus. That shows you're still relevant because 20 years experience is huge. Yes, but they want to make sure that you're still relevant. So go get your A plus. Absolutely. Go knock it out. Um, you know, yeah, and, you know, to get, like, a government job, it's pretty well required to have your A+. Plus. Um, so, you're studying for it. Awesome. Yeah, Nick, go get your A+. Plus, and then, like, if you want to go for networking, um, you know, I've talked about this before. CompTIA has this amazing roadmap. Let me pull it up. CompTIA roadmap right here. All right. So on CompTIA's website, they have this, what they call the roadmap, the IT certification roadmap. Let's see if I can, come on, zoom in. Oh, there we go. All right, let me get my fat head out of the way. So on CompTIA's website, they have the certification roadmap. And yes, pretty much every single certification on here, you know, A+, plus, A+, plus, A+, plus, A+, plus, A+. Plus. Every single certification, whether you want to be in information security, networking and cloud, hardware, IT management, storage, web mobile development, software development, they all start with the A+. So go out there and get your A+. Um, you know, it, it, it can only benefit you. So go get your A+, and then, you know, like me, I want to be in networking and cloud storage. So I'm getting, currently, I'm getting my A+. As soon as I'm done with that, I'm going to get my CSENT. Then as soon as I'm done with that, you got your CCNA. And then, you know, from there, I, you know, I, I definitely want to have some good security. So I'm going to go get some, uh, I'm going to go get my security plus. And then, you know, from there, I'm, I think I'm going to circle back around and get some of my MCSAs. Um, definitely the CCNP is on my list and round switch. Um, but yeah, ch take a look at this. Let's see if I can copy it into the chat here. So, if you haven't already, Nick, go check this out. We want to head to cloud. Cloud is the future. Absolutely. So, here. So, cloud storage. Um, networking and cloud technologies. So, like, personally, if I was in your shoes, go get your A+. Plus. Clicking on the wrong screen. So, go get your A+, plus, and then dive right into a really good path for you. Uh, you know, everyone's saying the cloud's the future, so absolutely. That's what I'm following. Awesome. Applying for many jobs didn't respond because I have no A+, plus at least. So, one thing. So, Nick, you're working on the A+. Plus. Um, here. Let me see if I can pull up my resume here. It's been forever. It's out of date. Um, so let me find it and show you what I did. Give you an example. Because so, so you don't have your A plus. Neither do I. So I t I passed my 901, but I, I don't have my A plus. I didn't even I didn't even have my I didn't pass my 901 before they hired me. So let me pull this up here. Stick with me, guys. I'm going to show you my resume. And I actually want to do do this a little bit more. I want to do a deep dive on this here on resume building. 
So, okay. Got to kind of block out my important information here. Okay. Let's jump to my resume. Here is my is outdated resume. It's a very broad resume. But one thing, and this is a huge pro tip, and this will get you into your interviews. Currently enrolled in CBT Nuggets, CompTIA 901. Final exam scheduled. Put that on your resume. Put your that you're currently going after your CompTIA exam and that you, fi you scheduled your exam. If you haven't scheduled your exam, do it because that will give you even more motiva motivation to study and get your ex uh, get your certification. But absolutely, put this on your resume, and I can guarantee you this got me into more interviews than anything else I put up here. I don't have my A+, a but I put that as working towards it. And that there, that there, I can guarantee you will get you a C right here. I also say that I was going after my CCNA, which I, I was I was studying both at the same time. So, um, all righty. But yeah, so this is my resume. You can see I've got a lot of my skills on here. Uh, you know, a lot of it doesn't pertain to IT even. I mean, you know, we have Photoshop. We have web design, you know. And then my employment history. This is my employment history, guys. This is so you can see, um, you know, my employment history. I had really nothing in pertaining. The closest thing I had to experience was this. Home, home field technologies. Oh, I ran my own website design development company for several years. I, I, I've actually don't run it officially anymore. I've shut it down. But, uh, you know, here I didn't even say really... I said on-site on services, but not limiting to network repair, installation, network security, and desktop maintenance. So, um, you know, but my, my true job before I got into the IT field, chip pile operator. I used to work for a chip pile. I used to drive a bulldozer. I didn't really go into details because it wasn't pertaining to the IT field. But that gives you an idea of my employment history. So... But yeah, the, the whole the whole point of this you know little rant here is put this on your resume. You know, if you put your training platform or whatever you're using and then say the exam, you know, the certification, what you know, 901, 902, or if you've already passed your 901, you're studying for your 902, say pass 901, final 902, final exam scheduled. Put that on your resume and that will open those interview doors. I can absolutely guarantee that. So Sorry, that was kind of a rant. It took me a little bit longer. Let's get back to the chat here. And it didn't load again. Okay. Well, while the chat decides whether or not if it's going to load. Um, Kevin runs on Dokken. What types of jobs are you applying for? And what uh, positions are you coming from? Uh, you were a sysadmin? Oh, I'm assuming you're asking Nick there, Kevin. So... Any tips on getting into the IT field? Currently have my associates in information technology and working on A plus 902. How do I get my foot in the door or land that first job? So Eric, um, you know, I was just talking about put put your put your A plus on your resume. That's a huge tip. Put your A plus on your resume. Sorry, I'm trying to see if I can get the chat to pull up here. This was such an impromptu stream, guys. I didn't get everything working together like I normally do. So, put your A-plus on your resume. After that, go out there and start networking. If you haven't seen it already, let's see. Let's see if I can throw it up here. Go check out... Um, Go check out my series on professional networking. I got two of my three videos out there where I talk about why it's so important to go professional networking, to go out there and start talking to people, um, and so on. So uh, go out there, start networking with people, and uh, you know, start building those personal relationships. After that, uh, Eric, you know, just start applying for anything and everything. And just remember, if you don't meet all the qualifications on that job listing, 
still apply for it. If you think you're capable of doing the job, still apply for it. Because there's two reasons why I think it's so important to do that. One, a lot of those job listings, all their requirements are more of a wish list than what, uh, you know, what their actual requirements are. Two, you might be the highest qualified candidate that's applied for that job. And you might get that job just because no one else that was more qualified, you know, you were the most qualified person that applied. Um, you know, it, it, that absolutely happens on a daily basis. So um, go out there and start applying. Brush up your resume. Get that A plus on there uh, that you're going out there for it. And um, go start applying. So I apologize, guys, that the chat's not showing up here on screen. It like pops up for a second and then goes away. Anywho. All right, let's go back here and see. So Nick, uh, I was a uh, Windows Server Administrator and VM Admin. Uh, I am in Toronto. They must be hard on certs. Thanks for the info. So, um, you know, go get those certifications, Nick. Um, that's, that's my biggest, you know, advice to you is go out there, get those certifications, put on your resume that you're going after those certifications, that you're studying them, that you've already scheduled your final exam for them. And then if you pass your A plus before you get a job and you start studying your next certification, put that, that, that next one on there. So. Try pressing where it says top chat and select live chat. Should refresh the chat window. Yeah, this is actually a, a browser source. Uh, for some reason, I can't switch it off of top chat. Um, I, I'm, you know, like I said, I'm still kind of new to all of this, so I'm, I'm catching on slowly but surely. There we go. Oh no. <laughs> I broke it. Time to call tech support. <laughs> Thanks, Kevin. Runs on Duncan. Uh, still working on all that. All still working all the bugs out here. So we'll get it working one of these days. All right. Why? Why is A plus so important for employees? It's a basic level certification. Yes, it it is a base level certification, but it shows that you know that base level knowledge. And it shows you're very well diverse. And it shows that you're willing, if you've gone out and got your A plus certification, especially if you have no IT experience, it shows that level of devotion, that level of dedication, that you're willing to put forth the effort to better yourself and better your career. You know, that, that is why I think it's so important. That's why all certifications, all knowledge is so important. You know, that's why college degree is so important. It shows that you're willing to put forth the money willing to put forth the effort to better to make yourself better candidate for that job so uh, i think that's why it's weighed so importantly and that's why it's a requirement for most government jobs uh sorry so <clears throat> um if there's any more questions feel free to drop them in the chat Probably going to start wrapping this up here soon before my voice completely goes. And I got a early morning. Got to fly out around 7 a.m. So got to be at the airport by 645, you know, 15 minutes to get through uh, TSA. <laughs> so uh, Kevin runs on Duncan. You also might be wor working on some very expensive equipment. The certification helps studies that you're qualified to work on it. That's very good. Um, yeah, I mean... Everything you're working on is going to be expensive in the IT field. Dakota, are you a football fan? Uh, not really. To be honest with you, I'm not a football fan at all. <laughs> uh, baseball, yeah, I'm a baseball fan. But uh, football, no. Not much of a football fan. So, uh, any more questions? I mean, feel free to ask them. You can ask me questions about uh, my job, how I got into the field. I kind of already talked about that a lot tonight. Uh, questions about getting into the field, resume tips. Um, yeah, let's, uh, you know, a couple more questions here and, you know, uh, we'll wrap this up after that. So, checking on everything. 
awesome. Glad I got the chat working again. Well, it doesn't look like there's any more uh, any more questions coming in. So I think I'm going to wrap this up for the evening. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, good, you know, For those of you going out there to take your uh, A-plus exams, good luck. If you have any questions, you know, drop them in the chat. Um, you know, I'm probably going to do an official A plus study group, not next, this upcoming week, but the week after, um, where we'll do a little bit more questions and answers. Uh, they'll be based around the 902 series test. Uh, let's, gosh, let's look at the calendar. Gosh, the 15th, I'm taking my, uh, exam. So sometime next week, uh, we'll, we'll do another study group. Uh, maybe I'll try to uh, fit it in uh, next Monday or next Sunday. Probably probably next Sunday, maybe a week from today. We'll do a, an official A-plus study group uh, right before I go take my exam. So, um, But, yeah, if you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to hit me up on Facebook, Twitter. Um, I'm in the IT Career Questions Discord all the time. So uh, just hit me up at IT Career Skills. So, Nick, good luck. Um, put that A-plus on your resume. Go out there and study like crazy. I can, I, I, you, you, with 20 years of experience, you will land a job. You can, I can guarantee you'll land a job. And putting that A plus on your resume that you're working towards it, that, that will help you tremendously. So go do that. That's my hugest tip for you. Uh, everyone, have a good night. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you, Kevin Runs on Duncan. You guys were always amazing. Lasted way longer. A lot more questions asked. So I, I'm glad uh, we're, got some new videos coming out um you know a lot of new great content so i'm looking forward to the future the, this channel is really developing way faster than i thought it would so i'm really glad so again thank you everyone thank you for tuning in until next time take it easy